here we are with another contestant at the Mustang competition. And your name? Brent Rollins. And I'm from Cape Junction, Oregon, and uh, I have a training business down that way. And you're training Mustangs, I understand. Yeah, most of the time. That's kind of what I became my niche is uh, working Mustangs, and it's served me pretty well so far. Can you tell me about the Mustang that you're working today in the round pen? Yeah, he, he's a little a gilding from Murderer's Creek, which is an HMA in Oregon, a herd management area. And uh, just a little bay horse, and he's coming along really nicely. And, you know, he, he learned to lead quick and was a quick study and, you know, made it easy for me and not a lot of fighting. And I was, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with my progress so far. That's excellent. Have you ever purchased any of the Mustangs that you have trained in one of these competitions? Oh boy, I've done a lot of Mustang makeovers. I've done probably six Mustang makeovers and I've let about three go. So I have a disease and I, I, I have a hard time putting my blood, sweat and tears into them and then letting somebody buy them for cheap. I'd rather take them home and sell them for more later if nothing else or just keep them until they get old and die. I just, I like them too much to let them go. And you are training horses to sell yeah, right. to the public. I, to sell to the public and I train horses for the public like problem horses, you know, people that have bought Mustangs and, and haven't got the progress they'd like, they can always get a hold of me and you know I can go pick up their Mustang and try to help them out and get them get their horses where they need to be and get them riding that way that we don't have Mustangs that are just you know living in pastures and doing nothing. Is it harder to rehabilitate a Mustang than it is a domestic horse? Sometimes it is. It, it, it depends on what life experiences they've had with humans. You know, if the experiences with the human was not pleasant, then it's harder for me to get through to them that not all humans are that way, and that's not what's going to happen when they're with me. And other Mustangs that have had no handling are just like having a wild one that's never been handled. So it just ranges from owner to Mustang to, you know, the situation. So, you know, when I get one for myself, that depends, and, you know, I know exactly where they came from. They've had no handling. But, you know, when you go to a, a private client and they have a Mustang that they've had trouble with, you, you never know what exactly you're going to get into. What is your goal today with this Mustang? Well, actually, I, I believe I'm done for the day. I did put my four hours in and I was able to get on and ride him. So my goal tomorrow will be to get on and ride him some more and possibly get him turning. And, you know, maybe if he's progressing enough, I'll, I'll, I'll put a snaffle and spit in his mouth or a hack of more and start, you know, riding him riding him for real and get him get him moving out, get him trotting and you know start getting him to where he's a, a riding horse. What is your draw to the Mustang versus a, as we've been calling them, domestic horses? They come with a clean slate. They come with no bad habits. They come with no preconceptions of humans. They, they don't think that you're just a feeder. They don't think they don't think anything. So whatever you portray yourself to the Mustang as, whether you're the boss, whether you're you know a fair leader or an unfair leader or a, you know, whatever whatever you put into them is what you get, as opposed to a domestic horse that's been raised with humans and he knows that that's where his food comes and he knows all these things. The Mustang's had a rough life, so when he gets three squares a day and hangs out with you all the time, that you know they, they appreciate that new life, that the second chance to be to be something more than just you know another horse in the pen. Do you feel like when you work with the Mustangs that they're just more honest, and are they drawing more of your honesty and who you are? out as far as you're talking about that clean slate versus maybe uh, maybe working with just a client horse that has been abused or just a domestic horse is there that part of you that is being pulled out that's reaching you deeper than just the competition itself yeah it's one of those things where it's not so much they draw it out of you is they force you to put it in them they force you to pull it out of yourself, well, you know, your honesty and everything about yourself and who you are and put it into them so they understand who you are, what you're about, you know, what your training methods are and, you know, to, you know, a horse is a reflection of the person. So as you work with them, they, what they do and how they perform and, and how they behave becomes a reflection of yourself. That's excellent. Well, we appreciate everything that you're doing here. And if you want to reach Trent, where can they reach you? All right, so on the internet, you can reach me at brhorsemanship.com. On Facebook, you can find me at brhorsemanship, or you can find me just at Brent Rollins on Facebook and get a hold of me that way. Thank you, Brent. You're very welcome.
We managed to do that. And here we go, a custom made belt buckle for Grant Rollins. For Wayne, wild champ, first wild, first champion of wild Mustang. Started to do this, I called a gentleman over in Sisters, Oregon, and I asked him if he'd like to be a fan. And he said, You're going to give out a prize for whoever wins. And I said, I certainly am. He said, Count me in. I'm going to make him a cowboy, a custom cowboy hat. And I'm telling you right now, this man makes the best hat in this country. This is Gene Ball. We have had more fun this week because Gene said he was going to make Corey a cowboy hat, and I've been trying to steal it from her ever since. That's it, huh? Yeah. Nice.